My first guest is a man who directed MASH, and Brewster McLeod and McCabe and Mrs. Miller, and he's also the man who once said an interesting thing. He said, no one has ever made a good movie. That, should be, that could be the theme of our conversation tonight. I think maybe he's being too modest. But here's a clip from MASH, M-A-S-H, and uh, after that we will meet Robert Altman. Take a look at this. Captain Peterson! Uh, what do you two hooligans doing in this hospital? Ma'am, we are surgeons and we are here to operate. We're just waiting for a starting time. That's well, you all. can't even go near a patient until Colonel Merrill says it's okay. And he's still out to lunch. Look, Mother, I want to go to work in one hour. We are the pros from Dover and we figure to crack this kid's chest and get out to the golf course before it gets dark. So you go find the gas passer and you have him premedicate this patient. Then bring me the latest pictures on him. The ones we saw must be 48 hours old by now. Then call the kitchen and have them rustle us up some lunch. Ham and eggs will be all right. Steak would be even better. And give me at least one nerd who knows how to work in close without getting her tits in my way. How do you want your steak cooked? We welcome the director of that film, Robert Altman. Does it seem odd to see a little bit of the movie after this long, uh, like that? Does it? Yeah, the last time I saw it was here, I think. <laughs> we showed some of that before. No, Maybe no. even the sa that same part. <coughs> what, what does it feel like when you see a film a year later? Do you have a critical eye for things you might have done over? Well, it, uh, it's embarrassing, but I, I like it. You like it? Yeah, yeah, it's surprising. You know that when Orson Welles was here, he would not, he honestly backstage would not look at his clips when they were on the screen. He just. Well, he's, he's more and... sensible than I am because I still like what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Say, who was that actor who was so brilliant in McCabe and Mrs. Miller? And he was the, um, the big tall man at the end, the marksman. Oh, Hugh Millay. He's, yeah. uh, Gee, that he... was, he's never acted before. That was his first. That's funny because I thought his name sounded familiar. I watched The Crawl and then I forgot the name. He's never acted. His grandfather before. was a painter. Yeah. But uh, he just, um, I just used him in, in a very... Uh, a much larger role in the film I just finished. Now, how can you take a guy who hasn't acted and know that it's not going to be a, a disaster? Well, he's not expensive, so <laughs> yeah. uh, the replacement is easy. And uh, mm -hmm. he, uh, I, I just felt that, that, well, basically, Hugh is a sort of a con man anyway, so he's been acting all his life, and it was yeah. very easy. He did exactly the same thing that he does. Yeah, he's so good at it. Um, what do you mean by this mysterious quote that nobody... Um, well, it was in an article, <coughs> wasn't it? You said about nobody I, ever made, has ever really made a good movie. No, I, what I said was that I feel that the, the medium of film has mm. not yet really been explored. In other words, I think that when we started uh, a film, we took it from theater, literature, and we were an extension of, of another art form. And uh, it's still that way. It's getting away from it. And I think that eventually somebody will make a film that is purely a film, and the audience can respond to as such. And okay. I don't think it's been done. How could it not have anything to do with anything else? I mean, it has to have dialogue, doesn't it? And it has to have... Well, no. Uh, well, I think it's well, they didn't for a long time, did <laughs> yeah, they? Come see, to think of it. I think it's like a, a, a painting, an experience. It's got... The only limitations are the, the linear ones. It has length. It has its beginning and an mm. end. It takes a certain amount of time. Yeah. But uh, the, I think that ideally the audience can look at a film, emotionally get the whole thing, and uh, not necessarily be able to explain it to somebody else. They say, hey, how would mm. you like the picture? I liked it. Should I they mean, be able to tell what it means? Yeah, to them. I think they should... To, to themselves, they should... Mm feel and know what it means and it's it happens in in sections of films that uh, you see today you, you you get an impression yeah. and you know what it means but you can't articulate it you must have um, you must make script writers furious because you will let the actors improvise things make up things and you'll shoot even rehearsals sometimes don't you or was it, is that true that you shot some rehearsals for mash well we, we managed was we had to but we yeah. uh, uh, i mean the whole picture was getting out of hand yeah but um the, uh, the, the film I just finished was, was my own screenplay, and I must say to any writers out there that I treated mine worse than I did any of yours. <laughs> treated yours what? Was my own screenplay. Your own, oh, your own yeah. script, I see. But yeah. it, it's not, I, I don't consider that we're mis, 
using the screenplay. We use it as a, it's a guide, and it's I'm trying to imp just bring the impression, the, the behavior that the mm -hmm. author intended, or that that we all intended, to uh, the best way possible. Do you have any idea why we're so different? I'm thinking of one certain thing I know about you, and that is uh, to look at you. Look like maybe a quiet, conservative businessman, but uh, but you can get drunk and stay out all night and couple of nights and then go right to work and I, I've heard this anyway I don't know if it's true if I did that I would be rolled in flat on my face to work and I would have to have a transfusion and sent home well I, I or have I no I, I misrepresented uh, I, you <laughs> no I, I sometimes don't sleep as much as I should yeah but I'm afraid of the dark and, and uh, I I'm worried that I can't really do what I have to do the next day so I stay awake and ignore it. Is that what it is? You'll stay up because you don't want to have the, the horrible the that come with going to sleep? I think so. Yeah. Gee. I, I really look at a film and I think there's no way to do this tomorrow. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then after I see a film, I say, how, how did they do that? I don't know how it gets done. Yeah. Do you have any heroes in among the filmmakers? Oh, a lot. I think yeah. the, the, uh, primarily the, the early... Uh, f filmmakers in Hollywood who, you know, I'm always asked uh, being a, a late arrival to mm -hmm. critics and things I'm always asked uh, what, who are your favorite, who influenced you and, and what directors influenced you and the truth of it is I probably don't know their names because I was very mm -hmm. influenced when I was very young by films but I didn't know there was a director it's strange to think there was an age when people didn't go to movies because of a certain director but because of who's in the movies yeah, and, yeah. Now, so, now directors are stars in a very odd way, which may not be good. Maybe we can talk about that some more. Let's take, let's take a little uh, march through time with Bird's Eye Frozen Orange Plus. We'll be back.